Happy Wine Wednesday, everyone. I'm Erica Manfrey, and today we are talking to one of my wine friends. Um, I call her Dom. Her name is Dominica. Is it like a joke now about how poorly I pronounce things? Um, and you can tell I'm in a different place than usual. I am in um, Pacific Grove and I'm going to be doing a little bit of tasting in Carmel Valley this afternoon for my uh, texting wine community. So if you haven't yet joined, go ahead and head to my profile um, after the live <laughs> and join the texting wine community where we do research and get some small boutique wineries, um, tell their stories and get you guys some deals. So it's all through text and it's super fun. So Dom the Psalm, she's here. Hello. Well, hello. Can you say your name for me? I always call you Dom and I'm sure I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> no, you crushed it. It's Dominica. Dominica. <laughs> it on the first try without having to do like a few stutters over top of it. Yeah. Yeah. And Dom, you are in Colorado. Yes, I live in Colorado, but I actually came home because I had three days off and found a round trip ticket for like 58 bucks. So I'm in New Jersey right now. What? <laughs> yes, not used to humidity at all. So this is um, not used to it anymore, at least. So it's kind of just getting to me. It's like downpouring right now. Sunshine in Colorado. So of course, I left at the perfect time. Right. Uh, that's just how it works. You need to go hit up Chris that I had on live last week. He's in New Jersey. I have to see where he's at. I never asked him where he's where he's actually located in New Jersey. I feel like they should be two different, like North and South Jersey should be two different states. Like so small, but yet so like very different. And I've only ever been to Jersey City and I was there to like commute back and forth to New York. So I haven't been very many places. Yeah, I'm South Jersey. So it's a, I grew up like in Margate and then I grew up right outside of Philadelphia in like Deptford, um, it's like Cherry Hill area is like what more recognized from people. But so cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for being on today. So we have to tell everyone all about you because you're so cool. So Colorado, I don't think of as like this wine growing region. Mm -hmm. However, you work for a winery. Yes. Um, I actually, I love it. Uh, so Colorado, I work at Barboy Winery. Um, it's one last year's Colorado Manufacturer of the Year for uh, Colorado wineries. And we're nominated again this year, so I'm excited to kind of see where that goes. But uh, it's really kind of been nice to see the progression of like my studies in wine because Colorado isn't really well known, um, or at least as well known as, of course, like California and such. So it's fun to kind of be a part of that upcoming world um yeah. around the aba has been around since 1991 and um we buy our grapes from kai Bab, who we love um he also has a winery called savage spectrum which i featured to like sparklets and stuff but um he's lived there his whole entire life and uh studied the viticultural out there and understood like what grows well so before i feel like they weren't growing grapes that actually necessarily do well for Colorado. Like we aren't really going to grow a cab sauv that's going to be consistent every single year. That's going to beat out California all the time or anything like that. So the varietals that we've seemed to be growing well um, seem to be like those medium body, medium full. So those Merlots, those Cabernet Francs, um, Albarinos for whites, if we're thinking about whites. So Riesling has been growing well. The Storm Cellar has been crushing it. We've produced a really good Riesling this year. So it's been fun to see the varietals that are growing there because they're very different. Right. Yeah. Well, and I, we always just think about the classic places. I mean, I can't get over how many little pockets of wineries are popping up everywhere. I mean, all over the country. Yes, it's insane. And it's really cool to kind of, because it hasn't been so overproduced yet, like we don't really, uh, it's so up and coming that we're really like hands on with the people that are doing it out there in Palisade and Grand Valley is where um, they're really producing a lot of the wines, um, Peonia, Hotchkiss. But 
out there, it's really nice because you really get to speak with right then and there the the winemakers, the grape growers. So it's fun to have that personal level with them. I just love that about the smaller wineries. You're going there, you're not getting a staff because they probably can't afford it. You're getting the actual proprietor, winemaker, vintner, sometimes viticulture manager. I mean, yeah. sometimes all. Oh. Literally everything. It's so, so crazy. And they're doing really fun areas, like a really fun thing out there with like the petty calves and driving around. And they're making it like a really fun up and coming area for sure. But it's crazy during the summertime how hot that place can get for Colorado because everyone just thinks like it's Colorado it's got to be so cold and it's really not in that area that's for sure that's really cool so tell me about when you first like stumbled upon wine like what did you grow up with it was it a normal thing or how did that happen well this is actually a story. Um, I had agreed to do the live prior to even looking up ticket to come home and then when it worked out it's worked out perfectly because today's my first day back and so i decided to actually take place in the place that i grew up learning about it and that's like our homemade like wine cellar in the back so um this is right at my grandparents house who live right across the street from my parents house and so it's kind of funny learning about wine i never thought that this would end up being like the the game that i would be in for a career but um I grew up, fortunately, not like going to Napa Valley and learning it that way. I discovered wine because it was in my house. And um, when we were trying to figure out basically how to sneak booze, we and we couldn't find anything, I would come here and cipher the wine out of the wine barrels in order to play like wine pong. And, oh. I would, and we always got caught because our teeth were red at the end of it. So like, I don't know why we decided that that was smart, but it it worked, but that's um, kind of where I grew up with the idea of wine, um, just being in the family and such. And then I really, I went to Las Vegas. I moved there for a couple years and I worked at Double Helix Wine and Whiskey Lounge. And that's when I really started studying wine with the owner, like Saturday morning, she sat me down. And I think that's when I learned about what butter, like why we describe buttery Chardonnay and yeah. the Ron Bearer and it was a really cool learning aspect in that side of it. So I really enjoyed it. And I wanted to get my level of like sommelier out there, um, but I moved to Colorado. And so that kind of changed career paths for a couple of years. So, yeah. So have you, so you've changed courses. You were going through one program and you switched. So can you talk through that and why you did that? Yeah. So I think this is like, it's, such a good honestly I studied so much about what kind of courses and what they do to fit before I could even get into or try to do any of the courses in general and so originally I obviously everyone wants to do quarter master sommeliers and that's more pertaining to um, levels of service and it's more prestigious for sure and I give credit for what they learn and everything because um, that was originally what I wanted to go straight into so I actually bought the quartermaster's study book. Like that's what I bought prior to taking the course. And it's very interesting to see the difference between like that book compared to the W set because mm -hmm. very interesting tactics. Like it's just a lot of knowledge thrown at you for the quartermasters and W sets very, um, it explains a lot. Like it's very easy reading um, and you kind of really get it where I felt quartermasters I was constantly prior to even taking any types of courses i was studying to even understand what the book said so i can go into the two-day course <laughs> and, crush it. and that, that was a lot um but they only offer such small amounts of like dates so i switched to the guild of sommeliers and i did the guild of Som over in denver and i liked it um but it just wasn't my end all course. I felt like I saw a lot of people going for W set and um, I kind of wanted to go on that path, but that's when I switched this year to W set one. And I just took my two, I probably should say W S E T, but W set is what I, I always say, but um, I just took my two and I should be hearing my results soon. So I'm excited for that. And so 
your thinking and going through the program initially was because you wanted to learn, but like, what's the goal? So originally with the court of masters, what I decided what differentiated going to choose between the CMS and the W set was I want to be more on education and writing and those like that part of it and not so much the service aspect which I completely respect because I still work at a winery and hopefully they're not judging me if they are watching this. Um, <laughs> but I know that I'm, I'm probably not the most proper with my techniques, but that's just not who I am. Technically, I'm a little bit more on the laid back side and I understand like those steps of service are so important. So I just kind of thought the W set aligns more with like my style of education and where I wanted to go with like wine blogging and just learning and teaching. Well, I like that because like, sure, we all like want to know like the right way, right? But <laughs> there's something to the education itself. I mean, I'm constantly learning new varietals, new winemaking techniques, new new to me it doesn't mean they're new <laughs> yeah oh no, i mean it's constantly changing and i i saw last week's um interview with tad at some and i loved that because just like what he said too when i was trying to figure out the courses and which one was going to be best for me i recognized that at the end of the day when i was reading through the reviews and what it took to be a psalm and everything it's really just your constant learning and education and your studying and continuous studying because it changes on a day-to-day -day with everything techniques and all and someone that took the course four years ago and never kept up with it isn't going to know something that someone is learning right now so i think that that's why i love the instagram world of wset and studying because it it is a constant reminder that there's something new out there to continuously learn so i'm really liking it <laughs> I had never heard of WSET until COVID, to be totally honest. <laughs> I was like, what is everyone putting on their profiles? What is this WSET thing? Yeah. I, um, so I agree. I actually, when I started at Carboy Winery, uh, luckily we went to Palisade and we were doing like all different types of vineyards. Um, and this one guy, so smart, he uh, just decided to buy his own vineyard and he was just doing it for fun but he was a wine distributor and he kept saying w set and i was so confused the whole entire time and honestly i was so embarrassed to not even ask the question that literally a month later when i started to decide what courses it was i was like oh i get this now like it made no sense so i think that i'm still trying to learn even other courses that go along with it yeah so, well i really that about what Chris said last week is like, I don't care what certification you have. I mean, there are people that have tasted hundreds of thousands of wines and they yeah. have no certification. Yeah. So those people to me are more qualified than the person with that piece of paper, you know, but. Um, and that's where I a hundred percent agree with, because honestly, some people it's not in the budget and we're going through COVID and it's a really um, tough time to really kind of, throw out the money for not throw out because education obviously is super important but right. you can learn these things regardless of having a teacher or not uh for me the reason why i really wanted to go through with it so much was specifically so i could relate to those who do study it and understand so i've noticed that for me luckily um what i'm kind of trying to divulge and like divert myself into is helping others with getting the best grade that they can and studying it and those cheat sheets that could be helpful that will just last in your brain longer than just like trying to just take the test and get a grade, something that's going to stick with you. Yeah. You yeah. just posted something that cracked me up. It was your, what is it called? I'm going to get it wrong, but it was. No, oh, it's the F F F V uh, V R G. Yeah. I was like, what is that? I don't know what that's called, but I'm going to mess that up. But yes. Flower first, ripe grape next. <laughs> yeah, it cracked me up because the last thing I thought of was Mimmel, which yeah. is you know, dates. And when you're looking at the kit, geography, I'm horrible at geography, which yes. really makes no sense if you're into wine because geography <laughs> is so important. 
I'm into like climates and microclimates but and weather, but I'm not into geography. And so it's literally the only way I could remember those yeah. states coming down. And it looks like a man. It does look like a man. And I do 100% agree with you on that. Um, <laughs> I love to say that that's, I, I was laughing at that when I saw your comment, but I, I always laugh with, uh, I call myself geographically challenged. Um, I, if you told me to go west or east at a stoplight, I'll tell you to re retry that. Tell me left or right. <laughs> like, and, and then wish me I luck. Like, oh. <laughs> exactly I first twister I, there. Yeah. Twister so <laughs> Yeah, you're kind of like, all right, I, I can't even lift my hand to figure out which one that is you're trying to maneuver. Yeah, no, I always said that. And I think that that was kind of what, because I was managing restaurants um, for a little bit there. And I really swore that was my passion. And I was going to become a GM. And after becoming a GM, I was going to get to that next food and beverage director. And then I was going to become um, a restaurant owner. And so with that, I really saw that going for me until there was so much pressure in order to get that, get to that place. And once I got that, I kind of got a little depressed because there was so much of like little things, you get servers, you get everyone just feeling like a little bit pulling from you. So it made me really upset when I was like, all right, this isn't for me, but what am I gonna do? Like, where am I going with this? Because the industry has been my life and God bless anyone that wants to always be a server and bartender because you do great. Um, I just wanted the education purpose behind it. So that was my main focus was how do I make this a new thing? And studying wine was so great because I'm no longer geographically challenged. I can tell you plenty of places of France. I can tell you Italy. I Now when um, we're talking about taking vacations, I'm like, I want to go to Stellenbosch in South Africa. I never thought I would be able to point to Stellenbosch or yet alone know what it was. <laughs> Sounded like a beer to me for a second. But yeah, for sure. So yeah, no, so you're currently you have a blog currently. Yes. And in that you're currently helping people like learn, like you're providing tips and tricks for the courses. And so if you were to call your shot, what would that be in like five years, ten years? Oh my god, that's what I we were just talking about this. Luckily I, I was with my parents. Um they're actually standing across the room. They're really cute right now supporting me. <laughs> um, but we were just talking about this. I honestly, when I started this page, it was all about kind of helping me learn myself because the more that I reiterated it or started talking about it and explaining it in my head, how to explain it to someone else, I memorized it more. And then when I started W set, that was when I decided that like, there's not that many people helping to get the best score and to retain all of the stuff that you've learned that you put your money and invested in your time. That's the thing for me is like the retention. So, I mean, like we can all pass the test. I mean, I know that's easier yeah. said than done for some. I, I, I can pass tests like all day. Yeah. Retaining it is what's hard and you have to be able to retain and apply that information. Yes. And that was my biggest thing is that I wanted to teach <laughs> Someone said, hi, mom and dad. <laughs> um, I wanted to teach that to really make it so it's stuck. And so um, whether that's, because if my fiance will tell you, I was such a, like a nerd way that everything, like my memory for me in order to really understand it and not just be like, I got a 90 on this test. I mean, I'm smart. I don't talk two months after and still understand it. So like I draw things, I see maps. And so... I wanted to put that out there for people. So I think within the next five years, what I would love to do is I would love to be able to kind of have my own course that can go structured along with the W set that will help people either um, pass with flying colors and understand it more or to come back to it and not have to go through the course again, but maybe get updated once or maybe just like, kind of just do their own test. Cause I think that that's a lot of fun. I've seen a lot of people take the W set and do my little test on my stories and just like, Oh, that was like, that was fun. I haven't done that in a while. I haven't thought about that in a while, even though I studied it. So I think that I want to keep that as a fun level of education that will help people and not necessarily make them be like, I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> like I, so. love, 
I wish you could hit them up and be like, hey, can I do like a fun version? Because I want to take it. Yeah. I don't, oh, I don't want to read the book. I just want to see where I lie. Yeah. Material. It just, but I mean, it's expensive. And then there's coursework. I mean, it's just kind of like a fun gauge for my. Yeah. I think that that's just something. And honestly, so we get really busy during the winter season. And then um, from there, I think that once my slower time comes, it, it'll be more of my main like goal is to focus on something that's kind of like a coursework for people. Just to have fun with it. Because I mean, it makes that part, I don't know, more memorable, I guess, when you're just kind of even thinking about things or more discussions to talk about. We all join these pages because we love so um, you have to yeah sign up for the course and i don't know whether you actually have to pull out like do the paperwork or and stuff um because i think that's supposed to help you but you can take the test after that i know for level three though because you guys did ask that for tatted some um when you do the level three, you can test into it, but to take the level three test, but that's basically saying that you took level two. So I don't know what that test actually looks like, but I think it's somewhat along the line. So I'm not sure how much that even costs though. But- So uh, really, Christy with Kiki Wine Adventures wants you to make flashcards. I think that's genius. That would yeah. be so, so, and such a fun gift. Yeah, and honestly, I think I really and I 100% agree with the flashcards. Um, I love them, but I will say for Kiki, what I what is awesome is that Brainscape is my go to, and it was 100% W set to to this level. Um, you pay for it. You can pay for it. You can do a free trial for a week, or you can pay for it for a year, and then um, or you can pay for it for a lifetime. I just did a lifetime because of whatever I decide to study next. But um, those were so, in, like, it was so good. But honestly, it was so humbling because I'd studied for weeks and then I get these flashcards where I have no idea what the back is. I'm like, I don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> and then John asked what you were drinking on or what you were sipping on. So I wanted to ask, are you drinking coffee? I am actually drinking, um, yeah, my, my stepdad's wine. Uh, it's a Pinot Noir that he had just bottled. So you can see, like, no labels or anything. But, um, yeah, he it's actually one of my favorites that he's made. Uh, he usually, like, loves to do those big, bold reds, so um, that one's always fun. But then he – this is the trigger. This is what gets us all in trouble. It's our grappa. And I have to, like, send you Oh, yeah. yeah. I need to make yes, this. Yes, you like, do. Because this is dangerous. We always say, like, one shot, and it's kind of like – the hangover movie you don't know what you don't know what's happening next after that um uh jaeger i can't have i can have one shot of jaeger and be fine but two shots no matter what if i have a full stomach if I, I mean it's like i wake up i'm like what just happened <laughs> yeah yes but that's it and that's what i love sorry um i saw the second sakina oh yeah pinot noir so and is the grappa from a specific bridal or I have to ask him because I think that I'm not sure if he mixes this with like a few of the end distilled spirits or um, uh -huh. how he does it. But yeah, I'll actually get more on this too because I don't even I'm not 100 percent sure there's like something like floating at the bottom. So <laughs> oh, it's just flavor. I am actually sipping on a Swiss white wine. I have never had Swiss wine. I don't think uh, I have. It was someone that sent it to Hannah to try. And oh my gosh, they call it the breakfast wine. And I'm going to get it all wrong. So I'm not going to go into it. But I tagged them in my story. So you have to check it out. It's, yeah. it's just a delightful little thing. Okay. So. I'm this. I mean, I love finding new wines. That's for sure. Yeah. I was so Christy, the one thing I'll say about studying, because I am a master of passing tests, <laughs> writing out the flashcards to me is what makes me remember it. So like I write in notebooks because as soon as I write it down, I retain it. Whereas if I read your flashcards and your notes, it, it just doesn't work the same. So for me, like actually doing your own flashcards really makes a difference. That's what I had. I had listed, um, 
honestly, so I had the W set book, then they give you the workbook. And then I literally studied, I did, it was a month. I like set up everything the way that I was going to, what I was studying, how I was studying it. I pretty much feel like I rewrote what was in the W set book in my own notebook. And then I did that onto my own flashcards. And then uh, Glow and Vina, Jess, Glow and Vino, Jess brought me on to Brainscape. And then I looked at Brainscape and I was like, I don't know, I don't know anything. And I have a day to learn all of this. Like, what am I doing? Oh my like my fiance, like, please stop thinking about anything. But yeah. another is um, colored pens. I uh, like there's certain things were in colors to kind of reiterate it a little bit more. Yeah. Now you've mentioned the word fiance twice. So tell us all about and when you're getting married and what fiance does oh my goodness um my fiance i just like saying it because i have like a couple more months but yeah we're getting married in september what was that yeah just a little but um he his name is hans so uh yeah he works we used to manage restaurants together that's how we kind of met and then i started um with him at this one restaurant and then I switched over to wine and then he's now in a brewery. So now he manages and um, works there. So he's, we met in Colorado now. Yeah. A couple more months and we're married. So that's what and I'm doing right now at home. I'm planning everything. <laughs> where, where wedding and all that fun stuff. Is it oh, a big wedding? I like to say that it's, it was not going to be big. Cause honestly, like I didn't want to plan anything. And I will say I'm, I don't mean to say it. I'm very cheap. I don't like to spend that you much money. Myself. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't like, but I, um, so we are actually doing it at Cardway Winery and the Gold Pan. We were at that out and then we're doing a ceremony in Brain Ridge. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and then from there, we are doing a second reception back in New Jersey for my family. So wasn't supposed Aww. to. Um, yeah, I love that. I cry every time too. I'm like reading all the readings and I'm telling my mom about like what we're going to have set up and I'm just like bawling. So my eyes might be a little puffy from that. Cause I was like, look how beautiful this is. So. And I'm like, so not a girl when it comes to weddings. Like I just want the party. <laughs> and I go to weddings and I think I get invited to weddings because I just like to like dance and have a good time. Like, Oh no, one's dancing. Fix it for you. <laughs> Here we go. Here's your guys' invitation. Come on over because I don't have to do like a per person. So get on over to Breck. I need yes. to just send girls in an invite. I so. should have like that as a side hustle, like the party starter. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm here for that. I want to be included on that business. Yes. What does so, he say? It's, in what kind Colorado, of have you ever tried? Cannabis and is, wine? is that what he's saying? Oh, I haven't. If that's a thing, I wish I, I I've never heard oh, of it. it really. It is. It is. A th yeah. How have I have never? I, heard I, have you tried it? No, I haven't. You guys need to connect though, because you guys are close to each other right now and you have family in the same area. So you need to. Yeah. Tad it's on. Um, where are Chris? <laughs> um, like I'm reading an ape, like a fortune teller ball. <sighs> and so after the wedding and the vision of the course, like what, how can we all support you? Like what, what's the best way for us to show you the love? <sighs> well, um, you know, honestly, like I feel as if just continue to follow along and answer any quite like answer the little stories that I have and don't be nervous when it comes down to being right or wrong. Cause I feel like that used to be what I did. I was like, I don't want to, I'm, I've studied wine now. Like, I don't want to like answer Lorena wine diaries, like questions. And she sees that I get it wrong because she's going to be like, who are you? Where's your credit like credentials from? So I always got nervous, but in all reality, like it didn't help me get any better or I didn't learn anything from sure. So, um, I always say definitely just keep following along on that studying. And if you are going through the W set or anything, throw it my way. I want to learn too. So I want to learn how to teach and be helpful with teaching. So that would be the most supportive way in my eyes. Well, I can 
totally see you traveling the world and teaching people about wine. I think that would be really fun. I would totally attend your course. You're just very relatable to me. I just really enjoy the way you explain yeah. things. <laughs> I, I appreciate can I can't wait to get together and do like a California, like me, you, and Hannah. Let's do it. And I think we need to do Tennessee. We need to do California, Colorado. We need to yeah. get Atlanta. We need to do, there's a whole, my whole world in COVID is like this small, but it's like opened up to this huge thing. It's we need to Chicago to yeah. see Anne and her husband. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been super fun. I think there's a lot of people growing throughout this wine community um, from day one, because I think I started in July of last year. And to see the growth in everyone that I, like, respect and follow, and just, it's so cool, like, to see the support and grow. And, like, now we can go places. Like, I can come to California, or you can come to Colorado, and anyone that follows can just, like, let me know when you're in, and I'll give you a wine tour of Carboy Winery. So, yeah. And I'll go. Where can you get Carboy? Do you have to go direct or is it distributed? Carboy Winery is now shipping, luckily. So, um, unfortunately, not to California. So, we can, I'm down to go to Chicago. Over there. I know. But um, I want to, yeah, like we, I, I feel like there's a way I can get it to you. But um, yeah, it's not, sh it's most states besides that and then we do have a case club program where it is like three bottles quarterly no membership fees or anything and you always get 20 percent off all your bottles at all times so you can always go in through that so cool. and the cancellation fees or anything with just signing up and trying it nice yeah well i really appreciate you coming on with me today and telling us your story we can't wait to see what you do and continue to learn from you yeah, I'm excited to keep watching these all in a, like a weekly now. I love, I love them now. Well, as, this is the last one I'm doing at this time slot. Um, a previous, I haven't said this to anyone yet, but a previous <laughs> employer of mine um, reached out to me and asked if I would come back. And so I'm doing that. It was a very exciting offer. Um, but the behind the line is not going away going to change time and day so please wait because I have a whole list of people that I want to talk to and that have agreed to talk to me so <laughs> um, yeah I, I'm now drinking wine at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a family vacation so I'm like yeah anytime so I was 12 <laughs> should have started sooner but <laughs> well cheers we can't wait to see your wedding and give your mom and hugs for us and we will talk soon. All right, sounds good. I'll see you guys later. Sounds good. Bye.